Kiribati region occupies only 4.5% of the total land area of Namibia, but it is the most densely populated of all 13 regions. With its rolling mountain passes, clear stargazing skies and wildlife sanctuaries, the Comas region welcomes you. Built in 1911, the Libby House is known to local legend as the Ghost House and attracts many visitors. The Siradi Damara Cultural Group willingly displays the Trupa dance. Although the age is unknown, this show of dance enjoyed prime popularity during the old location days. With the four billion year old Khibion meteorites of Vintuk's famous Post Street Mall as backdrop, the Makone Nguao Twana Cultural Group displays why they are currently considered as one of the best performing cultural groups in the country. The largest, longest and most majestic cave in Namibia is the Arnhem Cave. With just over 4,800 meters in length, its chambers and passages intersect with groundwater. Six species of bats have been recorded at Arnhem, including the giant leaf-nosed bat, which is considered the largest insect-eating bat in the world. The low population density, the minimal air pollution and the virtually non-existing light pollution in Namibia offers ideal conditions to explore the southern night sky. Namibia is considered one of the top three destinations for stargazing in the world. Gohaganas also offer a less competitive biking experience to the visitor. The fun are the beautiful scenic landscapes on offer. The Comas region has a large variety of herbivores. Oryx herds consist of females and their young. With a diet of roots and melons completing his necessary water intake, the young male oryx lives outside the herd.
except for older giraffes who tend to live alone. Male giraffes live together in wooded areas, while the females and young live in more open spaces. Males visit females only during mating. More water-dependent than domestic cattle, the waterbuck must remain close to a water source. The buck's body odour is so strong that it deters predators. Namibia's flora is exceptionally rich and diverse for such a dry country. The Comas region biome falls under the acacia savanna. Some plants are found almost everywhere, while others are confined to particular spaces. The medicinal kankerbosi is largely found in Comas. It is used in the treatment of cancer patients. The Namib desert dune ants' nests are simple structures. These structures are excavated among the roots of perennial vegetation in the sand dunes. The ants obtain moisture from honeydew, the occasional desert rain, and from the condensed fog water on vegetation. There are 68 endemic plants in the Comas region. The rolling mountains of the Comas region is a favorite activity for the adventure seeker. With an altitude of 2,500 meters above sea level, a number of gravel passes descend from the Comas Hochland to the Namib Desert. If you want, you can drive six gravel road passes between Vintuk and the Namib. And then, two more just for fun. From the short but spectacular Bosua Pass to the surprising Kuise Pass, getting to the Namib is an exciting journey. From the Gaub to the Spreetswoerte and eventually the famous Hamsberg Pass. Driving these roads will certainly pump your adrenaline and give you a sense of the endless Namibian outback. Twenty-three kilometers north of Vintuk, the Namibia Animal Rehabilitation Research and Education Center, or NAREC, releases healthy wild animals back to nature. 
NAREC provides an educational opportunity to bird enthusiasts, teachers and students alike. Only 20 centimeters long, the African pygmy falcon is the smallest falcon on the African continent. It uses the sociable weaver's nests as roost and feeds mainly on large insects and lizards. All birds of prey have hooked beaks and their presence signals a healthy ecosystem. Snake eagles eat poisonous snakes, including cobras and mambas. I'm Henny Roots. Uh, I've uh, been involved with reptiles uh, since childhood. Um, I'm an affiliated researcher with the National Museum of Namibia, um, and I'm also the curator of the live reptile collection. I'm Frans Wattiart. Um, I am an aspiring herpetologist. Henny here is my mentor. I've been working with him for a few years now. And my dream is to get the message of conservation of Namibia's reptile fauna out to the public. The reason why people shouldn't kill snakes. Now, snakes have been on this planet for millions of years now and they are really important to our ecology and to our environment as for keeping rodent populations under control. As soon as you take the snake out of the equation, the entire food chain will fall apart. I would love for people just to do more research on it, to read up on it, see how important these animals are. Studies shown um, that some of these snakes can actually help us in the medical field with their venoms. Uh, uh, something a lot of people don't know and I want to make them aware of this. Our biggest problem in Namibia is uh, people have a very uh, big misconception of the, the real potential danger of snakes. Uh, if one takes it to context, we have about 90 different species of snakes in Namibia. There's only 11 of those species that can possibly kill a human being. So if you do find a, a snake, it's not always necessary to just kill it. Uh, to learn to identify the 10, 10 or 11 different uh, really dangerous snakes, it's quite easy. Uh, so I, I do believe that the educational part of it, people need to be made aware of what the, what the more dangerous species are. Uh, and once they know what the dangerous species are, they also know what the, the species are that doesn't pose a threat to them. Welcome again to Endless Horizons, it's our fusion cooking show. We have a lovely three ingredients. We have some meat, or onyama as you call it, from the single quarters in Katatura. We have our kapana spice. Nobody in the world knows what the spice is, but yeah, it's very good on meat. And uh, of course we have our roaster brood. It's basically just bread, it's baked on the, on the fire. And we're basically com kind of going to combine this into a hors d'oeuvre type of thing or a snack wedge in a little tin foil with some uh, tomato, onion, garlic, cayenne pepper, paprika and a little specialized uh, chili oil I made earlier. Basically everything cooked together very quickly and then we're going to cut it sideways and then just insert that into the sides. So, this is our end result, our chili capana roaster brood. Make the endless horizons of the Comas region your next holiday destination.